Look back at the stories that shocked the nation and how Māori coped with the crisis. Nō te marama o Mahuru Rua Mano Te Kau, ka puta te ihu o Tautahi i tētahi ru whenua, whitu ira kati tahi te kaha. Kāre hoke hea i tua tangata ko tahi. Engari nō te rua te kau mā rua o hue tangaru, ka turakina te whaitua i ngoi kore nei. Nā te ru whenua ono ira kati toru te kaha, i ānea kauai ngā rohe o roto o te rā fiti anō hoke o Tautahi, o tira i mate ai te ko tahi rau, waru te kau mā tahi tāngata. A nei tā marae titiro ki tā ruau moko i mahi ai. Day by day, brick by brick, the hunt for survivors continues. More than 300 Australian emergency search and rescue workers are here to help. Andy Peake is one of them. Uh, how do you feel about actually coming to help out New Zealand, given your part of the world hasn't been doing too well from Mother Nature either? You've got to spread it around. If the shoes were reversed or the boots were reversed, you guys would be over here giving us a hand in a heartbeat, I'm sure. We've just come from a police briefing where we were told that, sadly, there have been no survivors found today. From your experience, does that mean we're not likely to find any more? Uh, no, no, far from it. There is there's obviously a survivability window, and as that window extends, the survivability obviously decreases. But as you've obviously seen in other disasters around the world, there's always those guys who are plucked out days, sometimes even weeks later. But we're still fairly confident and certainly very hopeful that we will find in some of these little in, in pockets within inside various buildings, that we'll find some more live people. So it's very, very much a, a live rescue operation, most definitely. The international response was swift. Japan, Taiwan, America and Singapore. But there's no doubt that the ANZAC spirit is a guiding force in this particular mission. It's, there's a lot of destruction. Um, it's a genuine disaster, and, and but I think overall people are coping very well. We generally monitor emergencies that are, and disasters that are happening um, actually across the world. Uh, because we're an internationally accredited um, task force, uh, we actually do a, a, quite a few international deployments. We were recently in Padang and Samoa. Uh, so we had a, a pretty bad feeling about this one from the initial time that we heard the, the report, so we started to prepare straight away. The Australian teams won't, won't ever respond into a country unless the country actually requests it. But obviously the relationship between Australia and New Zealand is so close that it was, it was a pretty good bet that um, we would come to assist as, as New Zealand would come to assist us if we needed. In fact, it did recently in the Queensland floods. Um, I worked with a number of New Zealand disaster experts who came over to help us. The teams are spread over the city at three main recovery sites. I joined the international media on a police-controlled mission to see the damage and the recovery process. Andy has been working on the PGR building. Uh, do you know what these helicopters are doing? We saw them lowering what looked like equipment onto a top of the really tall building. Yeah, from what I understand, um, there's, there's a, a building which is structurally unsound and not safe to enter from the ground floor as we normally would do. So I, I believe that guys have been actually lowered onto the top of the building and are then going from the top down to the bottom doing a, a floor by floor search just to make sure there are actually no survivors inside the building. More than 200 people are registered as still missing. The death toll is estimated to become New Zealand's worst ever tragedy. Many died simply by catching the bus in the central business district, where we are now. This makes me nervous. How do you cope with some of the unimaginable scenes that you must see? Look, it, it's very sad. It saddens us because we didn't rescue the person. Um, but we're, we're realists, we understand people are going to die, people have died and probably more people will die unfortunately through their injuries. Um, it's never nice, it's never pleasant, it, it is upsetting, but we train for it, we accept it, we understand it, we do see it on a fairly regular basis. An act of God may have broken the city, but a leap of faith will help restore it. How much of this is actual search and rescue rather than recovery? Oh no, it's all search and rescue at this stage. Where there's voids, there's hope. Nobody really knows, but we're confident that, it, you know, if somebody is trapped in a void that we will find them. Uh, and certainly people have lasted a lot longer than, than what we're talking about now. So uh, Haiti was a good example where they were still bringing people out 10 and 12, 14 days afterwards. Obviously as the time goes on, um, there's, you know, the, the chances of survival diminish. Uh, but certainly, you know, we, we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't think that there was a chance of people uh, surviving. And we'll continue on and, until the New Zealand government says that you know they've, they've done everything that possibly can happen.
Well, thank you, Australia. Thank you very much. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you. I roto i ngā haora i muri tata iho i te parekura, kā kori i te motu ki te āwhina me te tautoko i te whaitua kua hinga. Mā te kotahitanga o te motu, e puta anō ai ao o tautahi ki te ao mārama, ki a kaha anō ai tāna tū. Standing strong for those devastated by the earthquake, Māori have come from across New Zealand to help everyone in need. Tāna tūroti te kai te korori tanga. Ko kai tēnei hoki te tīma tanga me te whakotinga mai, e roto i te kai te korori tanga. We're going knocking on doors. And, that, and speaking to the people that, that need food, water, medical help. The Māori wardens were one of the first groups to mobilise in Christchurch's shattered eastern suburbs. Well, what we're here today is for you fellas, for what needs you fellas need. Although some residents were confused by the wardens' uniforms. Are well, we not allowed out there? No, 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 no. We just come to give you some information. When the wardens went inside homes, they found many in need of serious attention. He's very stressed, uh, the man inside. Um, he's, he just go, he said, oh, you just give me that paper. I mean, we're still waiting here today. Um, today is another day and another day and people still go past and nobody comes to see me. And I said, well, we're Māori wardens and we're here to do the best that we can. And just as the wardens sought medical help for the man, blue scrubs arrived in the neighbourhood. We're open to four teams and we're doing street by street. And, uh, and just making sure that the partners are all right in their homes. Nurses, doctors and tradesmen in orange vests joined forces with the wardens. We came as a part of the Te Arawa Tainui response team uh, from our Haora and Rotorua, really uh, in um, an attempt to try and support the effort uh, for uh, recovery now. Any uh, help we can uh, give, um, not to obviously save the world, but to help get it back on its feet. Um, that's what we're here for. The nurses were immediately overwhelmed by the number of people requiring medical attention. How are the nurses helping you, Mum? Uh, they're just helping her with the ventilin and stuff and letting her know that she's going to be able to get into hospital on Monday for her chemo. She's going to be plugged in for her chemo and stuff, so she's a bit worried about that, getting in town and getting it done. The warden's priority is to check homes and give what they can. If they can't help residents immediately, they take their details to police to deal with. The wardens are often dealing with raw emotions. Long-serving warden Madeline Barrow is directing help between the different Māori organisations working in Christchurch. But Madeline's carrying a heavy burden. I have a brother missing here. They've not found him yet. Madeline's brother, 54-year-old John Mason, may be amongst the dead, but the family are yet to find out. We're well, hoping he's not. But the last time this happened in September, um, he rang home straight away, especially to his twin sister. He rang back and said he was OK. We haven't heard from him since. So, yeah, we're hoping, we're hoping, very much hoping. You darlings want some water? It's where the need is. That um, if it comes to the worst for my brother, that I think um, he'd want me where the need is. You know, there's lots of people out there that's got tragedies and that and um, uh, I believe that I'm of good help here too, in my team. But in her rare quiet moments, Madeline grieves. Christchurch is in recovery mode. There are many voluntary organisations, including the Māori wardens, helping dig Christchurch out of the pit it's been thrown into. 
It took six days from the day of the earthquake for organised help to arrive in Christchurch's worst affected suburbs. At this time, uh, in the streets around here, people were crying out for help and um, we've seen the Māori Wardens are definitely engaging with them. Police are using the Māori Wardens to engage with communities like Aranui until an official response goes ahead. It's more of a combined team effort. Uh, the police are here as well. Uh, we've got other responsibilities um, to actually go into house by house to house. There's, there's search and rescue teams as well. They're, in, they're um, deployed elsewhere in the city. At the moment though, we're just concentrating our efforts uh, to the community in need, which is, we believe, Aranui and uh, the outlying areas around here. We're the eastern side where um, we're, we're focusing our attention on. As help slowly moves into the eastern suburbs, many residents are moving out, leaving their homes vulnerable to earthquakes and opportunists. Many people here don't have much anyway, but empty houses are being ripped off by heartless looters. Police have come down hard on anyone they believe is causing trouble. What have you got there? Oh, I've got a ticket for no helmet, and there's all these guys rolling around on motor motorbikes with no helmet teams. How much is your fine? To... Oh, 50 bucks. But they still need all these other cats rolling around. You know? <laughs> 50 dollars. That's sad, bro. Police say the boys were harassing army officers, something Marshall and his friends deny. They think we're leadering me. Yeah, nah, we're not leadering us. We're just chicken us on them. You know? Doing our thing, we got no power on that, do we? Got no power, got no tallers, got no... some free sausages and some free sausages, <laughs> you know? It's all good. We asked Superintendent Wally Homaha if slapping kids with fines for insignificant crimes is the sort of police behaviour that undermines community confidence in police. You're absolutely right. I, I, I sometimes wonder uh, what goes through people's minds at times when we make decisions. And I don't want to be critical of our staff because our staff uh, tasked to, to uh, maintain the law and to carry out their duties to the best of their ability. I would hope that they would apply that the law uh, on an even basis and apply it equally to everybody. But as quake victims look for comfort, it's tikanga Māori providing consolation. We have two uh, ministers who remain at the mortuary site and as each victim is, brought, is being uh, brought into the formal identification process, a karakia is performed for each one of them and that will be ongoing. A critical issue for the recovery operation has been how New Zealand deals with victims' different cultural and religious needs. Where we have established the mortuary, uh, to place their loved ones, uh, Naita who have gone through a cultural blessing which has been general to all denominations and, uh, and they are tangata whenua. Well the response from those international communities was you know, overwhelming. They were so proud and pleased that their cultural uh, needs had been respected so how are they dealing with the tupapaku, the deceased persons? We have to adhere to international protocols around victim identification in terms of mass disasters. And when we have a, a body count of huge proportions and uh, looking at the devastation in that city, a lot of the victims have suffered injuries uh, that you couldn't begin to imagine. And therefore the process of identification is difficult. We've got to get it right. You imagine if we sent the wrong victim off to a family. I mean, the devastation would be huge and the international scandal would be huge. You know, I'm so proud to be Māori in, in times like this, although there are sad times. And one of the things I said to the ethnic communities, that uh, ahakoa no here no here, uh, regardless of where we come from, uh, in times such as this, where we are struck by disaster and sadness, we come together as one.